Oh, I didn't see you there. You must want to learn how to sell on Amazon. Well, right now I'm going to go into this thrift store I'm about to pull up to, and uh, then we will cover all of it. I'll even try and put it into chapters down here, because, well, let's face it, a lot of you are looking for some specific information. But if you're brand new, this video here should take you from point A to point Z right now. Let's get into it, guys. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, man, nobody reads books anymore. Everyone has Audible. Everyone has a Kindle. Here's a fun fact for you. Already at 2.30 today, we've done almost $900 in sales, purely books on Amazon. And over 80 million people last year bought a book in the traditional sense, the type of books that you and I are going to be selling. So we're going to go into this thrift store right here, see what we can find, and then dive right in. All right. So if you're just starting, I'm guessing you don't have an Amazon seller account. So the first thing we're going to do is show you how exactly you get started on Amazon. And I promise you, it's very, very easy. So the first thing you're going to do, and of course, anything you see in this video, including equipment we use or sites that we show you, will be linked in the description below, conveniently located next to both the thumbs up and the subscribe button. That's the only pitch I got for myself, I promise. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to sellercentral.amazon.com and you're going to be presented with this screen right here, Become an Amazon Seller. Now you can sign up with this right here, as you can see it's $39.99 a month, plus the percentage that Amazon takes, kind of like if you sold on eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, or any of those sites, of course, they get their kickback anytime you or I sell something. It's the name of the game, Bezos really knows how to make money. So there's a couple options here, and there's actually a hidden option that many people don't know how to find or they don't know about it, and that's called the individual seller. Now, instead of paying $39.99 a month plus fees, you can opt to sell as an individual seller, which many people do start as. We did not. We started as the pro seller account, which you can see right here. But the individual seller account allows you to pay, instead of $39.99 a month, $1 per item you sell plus selling fees. Now, right off the bat, if you plan on selling less than 40 items a month, of course, this is going to be optimal for you as you would have to sell 40 items or more to be able to really see that the $39.99 a month is more viable for you. Let me give you an example. If I sell 42 items a month, I am paying $42 a month plus selling fees. If I sell 30 items a month, I am uh, paying $30 a month plus selling fees. With the pro account, I am paying $40 a month plus selling fees, but I am no longer paying the $1 per item on top of the selling fees. So you can kind of see how the math adds up there. If you're selling more than 40 items a month, it's just more optimal to go with the pro seller plan, as you don't want to pay more money than you have to. If you are wanting to go to the individual seller, all you have to do is click on this learn more button scroll all the way to the bottom of this screen and this one little line right here that says sign up to become an individual seller you will click that and then it'll take you to basically the same menu as the 39.99 a month they will ask you for things like your banking information where you want your money to be deposited when you do make sales ask you for a government issued id or driver's license just to verify that you are who you say you are and just a couple little more pieces of information such as the address you'll be shipping from a p.o box is just fine for your return address and a couple other small minute details like that now once you have chosen whether you would like to be a pro seller at 39.99 a month or an individual seller at one dollar per item plus selling fees you will be ready to move on to the next step see you guys this is all fairly easy all right so we need to go over what equipment, two things. We're gonna go over what equipment you actually need to get started, and then what equipment we have evolved over the years to utilize to make our lives, well, you guessed it, easier. So there's a lot of things that people will tell you that you need that you really don't need. In order to get started, all you really need is a cell phone, 
You need a phone? With the free Amazon Seller Central app, easy enough. And you need access to a printer. Even an inkjet printer will work, as in the beginning, for the first six months, we used an inkjet printer, regular printer paper, and we would tape our labels onto our packages. It's not that hard. Other than that, you just need something like bubble mailers or poly mailers to ship in, which we only pay about 20 to 25 cents per mailer. Not bad at all. When we first started, we paid $30 for an inkjet printer from Walmart. We paid about $20 uh, to get, I think it was 80 of those poly mailers, and we jumped right in. We had our phones, we had our Amazon Seller Central apps, and that was all we needed. You can scan in from the app right there. Uh, you can actually scan to find the sales rank, which we're gonna talk about in a second here, and you can list and fulfill shipment all from your phone right there. Now, when you go to print a label, of course, you need access to a computer, but that's easy enough, as you can even go to your public library and print off labels from there. Always make sure that you do not leave any customer information open on a screen, especially if you're printing from, say, a library. Okay, so these are the things, and everything will be linked down below, direct links to them on Amazon that we are currently using that make our life easier. So the first one is we use this Dymo uh, label writer that says 450. Uh, it should say the 4XL. Okay, yeah, so the 4XL right here uh, is currently about $200. Again, you do not need this, but if you want to avoid ever having to buy tons of printer paper or the annoyance of having to constantly refill a printer with ink, or if you're just trying to save space, as this guy is only about that big. Now we do also have a video on fully troubleshooting any issue you may have around the 4XL, and I'll put that in a card right up there on the top of your screen if you're looking for more information on that. Okay, so the 4XL is what we use to print all of our shipping labels. Now when we're actually scanning for books, again, you do not need this. This will simply replace the, um, the Amazon Seller Central app. We use this little guy, the eYoYo scanner, fits in the palm of your hand, and we can scan about a thousand books an hour with this handy little scanner. Now right now they're $39.99. There are times where it goes down to about $29.99 if you can catch a sale. Uh, again, this will be linked down below. Um, but this guy, paired with a phone application called Scout IQ, or Scoutly, which we pay another $40 a month for. Once you get the hang of it, once you feel that you just need to scale up and start progressing faster, this is the way to go. But again, neither the Scout IQ scouting app or this handheld scanner is required or necessary to get started. It will, however, make your life a lot easier. The third thing I wanna talk about is this Accutech Ship Pro Scale. Uh, we have this guy right here. Now the reason we recommend this scale is because of this. When you put a package on the scale, if you have an all-in-one scale, sometimes it will be hard to read the weight. And this is really just an ease of access as we can be uh, weighing something over here and we can pull this out. Say we're shipping a large box of books or something like that, a large set. You wanna be able to easily see your scanner. Um, we've had to purchase two of these as our first one did go out after about uh, two years of using it. So for a $25 scale, we got two years of use out of it, and it's more than paid for itself by now. Okay, so the other thing is, if you are going to be just using the inkjet route, there's a difference between doing Amazon Merchant Fulfilled or Amazon FBA. In the case you saw the picture there of our Dymos, we have the larger Dymo 4XL, which will print the big shipping labels that you can stick on the outside of a box or a poly mailer. The smaller one we actually use to print our labels for Amazon FBA or fulfilled by Amazon. So in the next step, we're gonna go over what the difference is between Amazon FBA and Amazon Merchant Fulfilled and how we determine which, uh, which route we go to sell any particular book. All right, so now it is time to talk about arguably the most important part of this whole business, and that is understanding the sales rank. Now, to put this into perspective, there is approximately 55 million unique listings on Amazon for books, and we're talking about books in the traditional sense. 
okay so with 55 million books that is basically the starting sales rank so the sales rank goes from number one bestseller sometimes will be referred to as BSR if you hear BSR they're referring to the best sellers rank which is one to approximately 55 million now when it comes to books that we will accept there is a difference between FBA or fulfilled by Amazon meaning you box up all your books send them to Amazon and Amazon will fulfill them for you with higher fees or there is MFN or FBM which is fulfilled by merchant or merchant fulfilled network those last two being one in the same now a lot of the books that we sell we sell through merchant fulfilled because we have a wider scope of books that we can sell so between the sales rank of 1 to 1.5 million we will send it to Amazon FBA between 1.5 million and upwards of a 5 million sales rank 5 million being the absolute top of what we will accept or what we will take being the top 10 percent okay we will do that MFN or merchant fulfilled network meaning we will handle everything we will store the book once we scan it in and we will then ship the book from our home or our PO box to the customer handling all customer relations all returns and refunds as they come in apologies for this I just got a green screen and I haven't set it up yet but as you can tell the chroma key is kind of picking it up there um, so what you're seeing right now on your screen is the Amazon Seller Central app with this phone scanning this book. Now you can see that this book comes up as a 1.7 or 1.8 million rank, which means we will scan this book into our personal inventory and ship it from there. Now there are a few downsides to each of these methods. Let's start with FBA. So pro and con list for FBA is Amazon will take care of everything. If it comes to a return or a refund, Amazon will cover it. Also, if you use the Amazon shipping or the buy shipping button that you will see uh, right after this when we actually go through how to ship a book, they will cover it if it is lost. If the post office loses your shipment, you are not liable for those charges and once a refund occurs Amazon themselves will refund it you also do not have to have a plethora of bookcases as we have all around our basement and office area down here and if you have a space issue then doing Amazon FBA is the way to go however two-thirds of everything we do is through the merchant fulfilled network because of the fact that we can go to a higher rank comfortably and we happen to have the room to store all of this another thing you can do is if you want to do merchant fulfilled but you do not have the space you can simply rent a storage unit to store all of your inventory and at the end of the year you can use whatever you paid for the storage unit as a tax write-off which is very very helpful so as you saw that was scanning it now you can see everything from the Amazon Seller Central app on this book. Now when it comes to Merchant Fulfilled Network, you do have to do all of the storing of the book yourself, you do have to individually ship the books to the customers, and you do have to handle all customer service and everything that that entails. However, the fees that you will be facing doing Merchant are much 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 less than if you sent a book to Amazon you'll be making about 15 to upwards of 30 percent more per book doing merchant fulfilled versus Amazon FBA so it really comes down to what you would like to do what you prefer and what your space allows and then basically what profit percentage you are willing to either give up or what profit percentage you are wanting to achieve based on all of the previous limitations or statutes or whatever uh, you would call them now we do like I said about two-thirds of our inventory merchant fulfilled and the other third we send to Amazon FBA now when you are doing Amazon FBA there will be limitations on how much you can send right now we can have a maximum of around a thousand books in our Amazon FBA inventory and we are always always at maximum there merchant fulfilled right now we have about 2300 books stored in-house right here in the basement 
uh, and we handle all shipping for that. If you have any specific questions regarding any of this, you can definitely leave a comment down below and we will get to that. So when it comes to sales rank, anything 1 to 1.5 million, if it's profitable, we will send to Amazon FBA and anything 1.5 million to 5 million, if it is profitable, we will merchant fulfilled or do uh, fulfill via MFN or the Merchant Fulfilled Network. Sometimes you walk out without finding anything at all. Sometimes you have absolutely amazing, earth-shattering days that are extremely profitable, but sometimes you don't. That's when you just go to the next store. All right, and that's a perfect example of why you don't just get up, like I, or give up. Like I said, you just go to the next store. So we paid, I don't know if you can see that there, about $12. You can't see that. It's about $12.72. We got all those books that you'll see here for a grand total of right around $500. So $12 into $500 and very good sales ranks. Now, either before this or after this, we will cover sales ranks and what it means and how we determine what we actually buy. But I can tell you right now, all those books will sell in under two weeks. So $12 into $500 for about 20 minutes worth of work. That's the business. That's the name of the game. While you don't always get that lucky, sometimes you do. And actually, quite often you do if you're willing to put in the work. See you guys on the next segment. All right. So regardless of what many, many people think, actually going out and finding your inventory is really the easiest part. And there's two main ways you can do it with one additional method that I'm going to throw in there. And we'll actually start with that. If you don't ever want to leave your home, you can use a program called Zen Arbitrage. What this program is going to do is it is going to scan the entire internet, or well, Zen Arbitrage really scans eBay, you could use Tactical Arbitrage, which is going to scan everything. Okay, it's going to scan eBay, it's going to even scan other Amazon listings, it's going to scan Walmart.com, Book Depot, literally anything. Okay, now this is an expensive software and you do not need it to start. If you don't want to leave your home, though, this is a viable option. Okay, it's going to scan everything on the internet, and if it can be sold more on Amazon than you can buy it for, it's going to populate it on a list. You can buy it from point A, get it sent to your home or P.O. box, and ship it out to Amazon or sell it yourself, making a profit without ever leaving your couch. Okay, now that is the additional way you can do it, but the good old-fashioned way that we started and that you will most likely start doing is going to thrift stores. Now, you can go to a thrift store uh, with this scanner, okay, with this guy right here that I showed earlier, or you can just go with your Seller Central app on your phone. You can scan books. Yes, it is very time-consuming to begin with, and you can find winners like that. Now, just today, you saw in the part right there, we found a wonderful stash of books, one of which has already sold. And yes, that was earlier today before I came home and made this video, and it has already sold for about $75. In the next segment, or one of the upcoming segments, where we show you how to actually buy the shipping and print the label for your books, I will show you the exact book that sold. Okay, so the third and final way that we get books, when you can get books, is to make a deal. Now, there's many local thrift stores out there, and being that we are just getting into yard sale season, many, if not all of these thrift stores are completely overrun with book donations. The thrift store we have a deal with right now practically begs us to come and get these books. We pay 15 cents a pound, and we pick up anywhere between 1 to 2,000 pounds every single week consistently and we have now for over a year from this same thrift store so what you want to do is maybe not the first or second time you go into the thrift store but definitely always be extremely friendly to the thrift store staff get to know them by name you want to be friends essentially with the managers of these thrift stores and then you can ask them hey do you have any excess of books in the basement or in the back and if so would you mind if I buy them in quantity and like I said we pay by the pound you can do it however you would like it just seems that by the pound is easier and we have uh, the other Accutech scale in the car to wherever we go uh, we essentially just weigh all the books by the box by the pounds put them into the car 
and pay them off you know so we got about 2100 pounds of books last week and we paid right around 285 dollars for it now there is another way that you can go about getting free books and that is by posting on say the next door app or Facebook marketplace and we like to title it as book recycling and you will be amazed at the amount of people that will contact you trying to give you their books that you can then turn around sell and profit from now many people also like to use the Craigslist app you can go on to your App Store uh, or your Google Play Store and look for the C Plus app. Now that's going to be the app directly for Craigslist or Craigslist.com and you can also post wanted ads on there for books and the amount of people that are going to contact you I guarantee you is extremely surprising. Alrighty, so when it comes to actually shipping your order once you've sold it we are going to be doing this one which you'll notice this one we actually picked up earlier today and I hope that comes through we paid one dollar for this book and as you can see right over there uh, we sold it for seventy four ninety five about two hours after actually picking it up so one thing I wanted to cover is these little stickers most of these we can just peel right off but if you can't do that we got this little goo gone right here with an easy spray top right here so we'll just spritz it onto it and clean it off right easy enough now the envelopes that we use we get in bulk we get these big white padded envelopes and we use those for anything under twenty five dollars this guy however at seventy five dollars is going to go in a thirteen by eleven by five cardboard box now these boxes we actually got five thousand of when a Kmart uh, local Kmart closed we got five thousand of these boxes that video is actually on this channel if you look for uh, I believe it's called we bought out all of Kmart's boxes or something like that it was an incredible find but when you get an order in all you have to do is go over to the drop down on the top go to orders manage orders and manage orders will bring you to this screen right here now once you are in this screen all you do is click buy shipping and you enter the weight of the item and you enter the dimensions of the packaging it's in and then click print label now I can't click buy shipping right here because all of my customers information will be pulled up and we certainly don't want that so once you get the order in you go to your manage orders buy shipping enter your dimensions of package enter the weight of the package and print the label it's pretty easy guys hopefully you're still with me all right so this is essentially what that buy shipping screen is on the very top of this you'll have all your customers information I was able to screenshot this guy down below it will just have you enter the dimensions of your package the weight of your package and then select a shipping option so it's as easy as that once you do all that and click buy shipping it will automatically generate a label for you which you can then print slap it on the package and send it out all right so you've set up your account you have found books and potentially you have shipped books so at this stage what I want to do is basically just go over this seller central dashboard and kind of give you an insight at what you're looking at right so first off we're gonna ignore almost everything under this line up here we're gonna take a look at these uh, one two three four five six seven we're gonna look at these eight boxes up top and kind of go over what each one of those are so marketplaces right off the bat we sell in Amazon US Amazon Mexico and Amazon Canada now right off the bat I would definitely not suggest doing that as for each different area or marketplace that you're selling in it's very very smart to adjust all your shipping rates adjust your taxing there's just a lot of different things that go into it that honestly for our first few months of doing we messed up horribly and we lost a lot of money so right off the bat you're not going to be enrolled in all these different marketplaces you will just have the one marketplace amazon.com United States okay so don't worry about that now open orders is the next bar on here and what this is is this is orders that have not yet hit your total balance that you're going to be paid out okay so now we get paid out on average uh, weekly sometimes bi-weekly and anything that is in open orders these are orders that are still within the return window they are pending payment 
or they are still processing through the system, right? Um, there is about a week-long window from when you ship something out to when it becomes no longer an open order because Amazon does give customers that little time window to where if they do want to return it, they can return it and a refund isn't going to uh, interfere with this total balance over here, right? So they put open orders there. Think of them as pending orders. These are pending orders that are pending either acceptance or a customer return. Now, very rarely do we get a return, especially doing books, but it does happen sometimes. So when you see this open orders, okay, you can see we have 14 pending through FBA, two pending through seller fulfilled, okay? Uh, the next one is pretty self-explanatory. Today's sales, self-explanatory, yes. Uh, today's sales is just how many sales have you done today? This is a gross, not a net, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, next to that, we have buyer messages. Now, these are going to be messages that a customer has sent directly to you from themselves. You can see that there's two brackets in here, under and over 24-hour target. You do have to answer all customer inquiries under 24 hours, or you might get the deadly little ban hammer dropped on you from Amazon. Now, they are very strict. You do have to 100% stay on top of shipping and on top of customer relations, or, well, Amazon's not going to let you sell on their platform for very long. Okay, so the next one is called buy box wins, and this isn't something you necessarily have to worry about right off the bat. Sometimes it'll happen, sometimes it won't. And the buy box is something we're going to go into on an entirely different video as it's kind of intricate as to how it works, and there's a lot of confusion around it. But basically, if you go to Amazon.com, and I have one open right here, if you go to Amazon.com, this on the right side over here is the buy box, right? Now, you can go under here and be like nine used, and you can see all these different people that have uh, additions for sale. But this one right up front that you can instantly add to cart will be the buy box, right? Now, sometimes the buy box is more expensive than the rest. Sometimes it is less expensive than the rest. Um, but it is always going to be the first thing a customer sees when they click on a listing, right? So it is important to have the buy box, not something you really need to worry about right as you're getting started. Uh, the next box is self-explanatory. Again, total balance is going to be your net that you're going to be paid out on your next pay date. Some people get paid bi-weekly. Some people like us choose to get paid every week. It just depends on your preference and what your account allows. Some accounts are locked into bi-weekly payments depending on when they were started. Some accounts have the ability to request payment immediately. So technically, you could be paying yourself every three or four days if your account has that option. But the total balance is just your net income for that pay period. Your IPI or your inventory performance score this is basically letting you know um, how well your inventory moves. So if you have inventory that is sitting in Amazon for a long time, if you have inventory that is out of stock, say you sell a book and you leave that in inventory at a zero quantity for an extended period of time, that is going to go down. So you essentially want to have a score above 450 to avoid any strict limitations on how much inventory you can have at Amazon. The lower your IPI score, the greater your restrictions are going to be. Okay. The next is global promotion sales. Now we don't do any of this. This is mainly for private label sale, uh, sellers, people that are selling multiple quantity of an item. Perhaps they have a private label brand and they will actually be advertising their product through the global markets. Now, as we're just selling books, once we sell a book, that book's quantity goes to zero, and there really isn't any need to promote that because we only take things under a certain sales rank. We don't have a mass quantity, say five to 600 of one item. Uh, if we could find five to 600 of the same profitable book, then yeah, we might advertise it. But as of right now, I think the largest quantity we have is about 25 or so of the same book. So. At that point, it's not worth spending extra money on top of the fees and on top of Amazon's percentage that they take to further advertise that, especially since they're already at a good rank. 
Okay, so moving down here, we're going to skip the restock inventory. Uh, ship orders. Now, the ship orders is going to be the merchant fulfilled orders or the merchant fulfilled MFN listings that you personally have. If you have chose to go that route, this has nothing to do with FBA. These are orders that you have to ship within the next 24 to 48 hours. Okay, the next box over here is going to be news. This is just general news posts from Amazon, not from other sellers, letting you know of any changes coming to the marketplace. We're going to skip promote with coupons for the same reason we skipped uh, global promotion sales. We're going to skip add more products and we're going to go to stranded inventory. Now stranded inventory in itself is its own video. I'm going to put that in a card right up there. If you do send units to FBA and you see that they come up stranded, don't worry. It's most likely they're just sitting in processing and they're coming up stranded. There's nothing actually wrong with the listing. Okay, so seller pull, we're going to skip that. Uh, B2B product opportunity, we're skipping that. Tutorials and training, if you would like to get tutorials from Amazon on how to sell on Amazon, they're completely free for Amazon sellers. You can just visit Seller University right there. It's essentially like um, frequently asked questions, right? Uh, list globally, you're not going to be doing that, so we're not going to worry about it. And last but not least, we have the seller forums. This is essentially forums where you, myself, and all of the other Amazon sellers can ask questions, share information or ideas, uh, or just rant and rave about things they don't like about the Amazon seller platform. There's one of those everywhere. Okay, so the last thing we're going to look at on the top right here is the help. If you ever need to contact Amazon for any reason or you have open cases on Amazon for, say, uh, returns that shouldn't have hit you but did, that's where you are going to find all of that. And that is essentially your seller dashboard, at least what you're going to utilize right now.